Nicola Sturgeon has announced her intention to resign in what was one of the longest speeches in living memory. Many of us were left wondering if her successor would actually be anointed before she finished speaking at Butte House, at which point she went on to explain to us that she was actually human. Now, to be clear, I'm not expecting violins here, but I am a human being as well as a politician. It came as a surprise, quite frankly, because many of us have been wondering for a very long time. And then she kindly went on to explain the concept of the passage of time and ageing. When I entered government in 2007, my niece and youngest nephew were babies, just months old. As I stepped down, they are about to celebrate their 17th birthdays. None of us are actually sure what babies are, but I think it's the same thing as babies which come out of vaginas, which I should point out only women have. But the longer any leader is in office, the more opinions about them become fixed and very hard to change. And that matters. Especially when most of those are kind of the crankies or the ginger dwarf from the north, or people that think you don't really understand democracy when you say one thing and then do something else. That the fixed opinions people increasingly have about me, as I say, some fear, others little more than caricature, are being used as barriers to reasoned debate in our country. Statements and decisions that should not be controversial at all quickly become so. I don't know, Nicola because I think it is quite controversial not to be able to say what a woman is. I think it's quite controversial to stick someone with a penis into a women's jail and then the women inmates be raped by the person who's wielding the penis. I feel like that sort of stuff is actually pretty controversial, as is saying that an independent referendum would be the last one, but then not getting the result you wanted and so going on to have as many as you need until you get independence, which you've never got. There will be time in the days to come for me and others to reflect on what has been achieved during my time as First Minister. Oh, yes, Nicola. Well, I guess there's the complete buggering up of the health service in Scotland where waiting times are off the chart and excess deaths during COVID were higher than those of the rest of the UK. There's the, the drug issue where drug deaths have increased year on year and are now kind of off the charts in Scotland. There's the issues with the ferries, education, the attainment gap between the poorest and the richest is bigger than it's ever been at Holyrood. There was the time that you misled Holyrood and then there's this whole gender thing where you want to make it so that no one knows what a woman is anymore. Men can become women just if they decide to on a Tuesday. But yeah, good job, Nix. Parliament will soon consider legislation to improve access to justice for victims of rape and sexual offences. Rape and sexual offences. Does that include women in female-only jails who are raped by a guy who says he's a woman despite the fact he has a penis but you say we must believe that even though he only decided he was a woman 25 minutes ago or am I thinking of something else? While I am stepping down from leadership I am not leaving politics. Oh for god's sake it's always the same isn't it? I'm leaving but I'm not gonna hang here like some one-armed burglar with an itchy ginger ass. Just go. And finally, I'm not wanting to be too harsh, but I've always campaigned, as many of you know, for very, very attractive sign language people. I just think it helps lift the mood, gives people something to look at, like the weather girl on TV that everybody likes, including lovely Mark, gives you something to kind of watch when you're being a bit bored by Nicola droning on and on. And still, she has refused to take my advice to get hot sign language people. First Minister, if you can't. So, in fact, I think I'm amongst many in saying that I'm glad she's gone.